always being just right down the street. Being a um, again, I'm from Ohio, and I know the football there is, um, you know, high level, and so we definitely want to continue to tap into that. Um, you know, and the different players we have on our team from Ohio have been very you know, big impacts for us. So I want to continue to do that, build those relationships back up, and uh, continue to bring those players up here and show them what we're about. And it's been going pretty well here recently. So I would say so. Not right there, Steve. Clink scale, Michigan co-defensive coordinator, defensive backs coach. Courtesy of mgoblue.com. He was talking a little while back, but uh, I was listening to it today. And what Clink had to say definitely applied. Because uh, Michigan has had some success recently, real recently, in the Buckeye State. Welcome in on this uh, Monday. Good afternoon, Michigan football great to be here. I want to wish everyone with Christmas coming up on Sunday. Happy holidays and hope you have a, a great week. Christmas came early for Michigan fans over this weekend. It feels like uh, today is Christmas or yesterday was Christmas. Maybe Saturday could have been the, the day, but um, the weekend as a whole, very positive for the maize and blue. And as uh, you should uh, expect, that's what we're going to be getting to coming up today. We are here every day, weekdays at one o'clock talking about the latest in Michigan sports. And there's um, lots to get to with the uh, team. I shrugged my shoulders a little bit because, uh, you know, I, I seem like I say every day, well, well, there's lots to get to. There has been lots to get to. And, but today I think it's maybe the, uh, the most to get to we've got the transfer portal is just popping uh we will get to that uh there's awards aplenty michigan had a banquet over the weekend and they're handing out the hardware the members of the team we're going to start with the commitments with uh the early signing period coming up on wednesday all year long we've been monitoring michigan and you know michigan Wins the Big Ten last year, goes to the college football playoff to have a top 10 recruiting class last year. And, you know, with that, you and, and, and I were, were thinking, hey, you know, if Michigan, now that they've been in the college football playoff, we should expect them to get a top five recruiting class. But it hasn't been going that way, as you know, as you've been watching. You know, I was wondering, there's like a, a little cackling, like a little, sound like a little fire. You listen really close. And and it is there. Uh, the fire is uh, is there. I'm going to turn the fire down. I don't need the fire. It's nice to have the, the warmth of the fire. And uh, I was wondering, you know, where's that fire sound coming from? There it is. Down in the corner there. You can see it's supposed to warm your hearts. Where was I? Where was I? Oh, I was talking about, uh, I was talking about uh, Michigan. And uh, getting to, oh, where they, uh, I'll remember now. Took me a second. That we were expecting a top five recruiting class after Michigan went to the college football playoff last year. And, and it hasn't materialized uh, all year long. You know, Michigan was like, you know, 50, 40. But they've been making the move. And a spoiler, they're inside the top 20 right now. And combine that with how they've been doing in the transfer portal. And things are going really well for Michigan. Let's get right into the commitment news. Not everybody. I know most of you, I don't know, 75% of you are like, this is old news because it happened over the weekend. Michigan uh, reeled in commit number 20 for this upcoming recruiting class, the 2023 class, in the shape and size of uh, six foot three, 190 190-pound athlete out of Youngstown, Ohio, DJ Waller, and that is, uh, you know, Steve Klinkscale, who's from Youngstown and was talking about the Buckeye State, and he wasn't specifically talking about DJ Waller because that sound was from, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, but it applies with uh, being able to go down to Ohio and get a guy, and, you know, he's rated as a three-star, but, and, you know, this gets a little bit where, you know, it can be a little dangerous, but he looks like a four-star to me. I, I bet this kid is uh is gonna be a player he's gonna be one of those guys that you look back on and say how do they and i haven't watched one second of him play i'm just going off the look test uh 
you know, he looks like a four star. I think Michigan got a, a steal in DJ Waller, and that put Michigan into the top 20 in the rivals rankings, which is, um, you know, um, you'd have taken that maybe as a final ranking, uh, certainly a couple months ago, they were into the 40s wondering, hey, maybe uh, top 25. But here they are into the top 20. But they haven't stopped there because we've got some uh, breaking news. And Michigan was able to get another commitment today. If you're on the Maize and Blue Review, you saw some uh, some forecasts coming uh, this uh, player's way, uh, a linebacker out of uh, Colorado. Those of you who are on the Maize and Blue Review, you uh, you had a busy week in, in checking it all out. I'll put it up on the scroll how you can uh, get in there and find out all this news. But Hayden Moore, uh, he is in. He's, he's tweeted it out and made it official. There's his uh, there's his tweet. I like it. You know his picture. He's got he's got Colorado. It's pretty easy for me to break this down. He's got you know the Colorado mountains in the background, and then he's got the big house and the other side, and he's right in the middle. And he says, "Committed, Hayden Moore in sunny skies." Over Ann Arbor, Ooh, dark clouds over Colorado. I don't know what that is all about, but I, I like the picture. And now with more of the adjustment, if you're keeping track at home, you are keeping track at home. Michigan is up to 21 verbal commitments with early signing day being on Wednesday and their team ranking uh, holding in there at 19. So what do we think about Michigan and their recruiting effort? Uh, you want more, you know, you want, you want better, you want bigger, but this class all along, Michigan feeling their way and winning, you know, we thought it was going to be the, the test case. It was going to be the test case. If winning takes care of everything, was Michigan just going to be able to, you know, poof, get a top five recruiting class. Well, name, image, and likeness is factored in there uh, for the, uh, for the top players and Michigan's approach with recruiting and, you know, paying signing bonuses. So it's something that we were, we were going to look at all along that is affected. You know, if, if Michigan was, you know, peeling off those a uh, hundred thousand dollar bills, I think that they could be into the top five. Uh, you know, they have not taken that approach. So here they are into the top uh, 20, however you think of that, but they're not done yet. You know, we'll see what happens coming up to Wednesday and then, all the way to February 1st. Then it becomes flip season uh, after Wednesday. Here is somebody that you might say, well, who should we be keeping an eye on? I'm keeping an eye on this guy, uh, Jair Hill. He's a four-star, and he is uh, from Illinois. He is making a early signing day announcement coming up on Wednesday, and he is down between Michigan and uh, Illinois. And Michigan, it, at times, you know, they, they seem like they've, you know, are making the push. And I, I don't know if the young man has a 100% uh, idea where he's going right now. I think some days he feels like, why not go to Michigan you know, and, and, and go to the, and, and win the big 10 and, 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 and go to the college football playoff. And then I think other days he thinks, uh, you know, maybe, maybe Brett Bielmo will, will sit on me and I don't know. And so he's got a decision to make and, you know, we'll see what that decision ends up being before we go any further. I want to tell people that, you're thinking around and you might be a little squirrely and antsy thinking about, I don't know what to get my Michigan fan in my life. What should I get him? Well, don't go any farther. You can just sit there on your phone and take care of business by giving the gift of the amazing blue review this holiday season, go to michigan.rivals.com and you can give that gift to yourself to the Michigan fan in your life, and you can get that premium access and know everything that's going on with the recruiting portal, the Michigan football team, where they fit in, scholarships, all of that. You get premium access for a full year for just $22. Use the code MBRHOLIDAY. That's M-B-R-HOLIDAY. Get that done. Go to michigan.rivals.com. All right, before we do dive into the transfer portal news, 
we always will like to see where the people are at, the Michigan fans. And, you know, for that, you're able to use the, the feedback feature and you get in and we re- respond and see, you know, where you're at. Uh, Antoine says uh, he was making predictions about uh, this is uh, another one of his predictions that have come true in regards to uh, Michigan. He's saying that uh, they'll get better prospects through the portal with the culture and development. Other players from other teams will be upset or have an issue with other programs and move on to our team. All right. Uh, and, And Michigan has had a great week, which we're getting to straight ahead in the transfer portal. Riley says, he's asking a question. Are we able to offer transfers more NIL money? Well, let's just stop right there. Michigan is taking the approach that they're not offering anyone money to sign or to transfer. Michigan is saying, look, this is what we've got going with the name, image, and likeness. Look at this player. Look at that player. Look at what everybody's driving around. Everybody's getting taken care of when they're here. There's all kinds of opportunities. I'm not, let me t- backtrack. I don't think Michigan's saying everybody's getting taken care of. I think they're presenting what Michigan has going on with the players. And they're saying using the players as an example of what, you know, kind of packages uh, that they have been able to enjoy name, image, and likeness wise. But no, I don't think that they are, are offering money to uh, recruits. I know they're not offering money to recruits and they're not offering money to transfers. Riley saying, what's the disconnect between our recruiting class and transfer class? There is no disconnect. I think when it comes down and we're going to get to this, it's uh you know, each player you have to take individually, but when you're in high school, you think about some of these transfers, the guys, when they were in high school, they were under the old set of rules where if they were going to take money, it was actually, you know, um, you know, taking, you know, bags of cash under the table. We kind of felt a little dirty, even though, you know, a lot of guys did it kind of felt like when Georgia was, you know, uh, wiring your uncle or, or, or dropping off a briefcase full of cash, it, it felt kind of dirty, but now in aim image and likeness, they're saying, look, we're not, you know, giving your uncle a hundred thousand dollars. We're just going to give it to you right when you come in for, for, uh, for coming on in here. Just don't say that we're doing that. But once you come in, we're giving it to you. That's as easy as it is. And it doesn't seem so dirty. And the NCAA is not doing anything about it. And everybody pretty much is doing it with the exception of a few, a few schools like Michigan. And, you know, that's been uh, how, uh, you know, it's hurt them. You know, um, why isn't it hurting them with transfers? I think the the transfers were under the old set of rules, and now they're looking at it, and they're saying, hey, I can come in here. I, I can be a winner, and I can get some money. Uh, I don't I don't have to have it, you know, up front, which, you know, it, it, most guys are taking up front money and signing bonus money. Uh, these guys that are getting right in and know that they're going to be players and they're going to be part of it, you know, they can get money quicker. So I think all of that, that does factor in, but I think Michigan being a winner and is, is, is factoring in people want to be a part of a, a successful program. And so I think that's where it comes in Riley. If that is uh, making any sense to you when it comes down to name image and likeness, the coach is explaining it saying, that he doesn't want Michigan to hand out money the way other programs do. That NIL stuff will and is backfiring. Mm. Thing that it is, in, in some cases, you're right. I mean, look at Miami, look at Texas Tech, teams that you know that are out there and that are, you know, handing big time signing bonuses out. Uh, it has not worked for Texas AM. It backfired for the U, where they got their money. And they got a lot of clout heading into this year, but then the team sucked and all of them hit the transfer portal and they're all left with what? With their money. So that's the point. Uh, There have been some schools, USC, you know, for one that have uh, given out signing bonuses and, you know, they they had some success with it. There's some other uh, teams uh, for sure that we could point to and, and, uh, and, and look at it. Uh, let's see as we continue on, seeing what some others have to say. Mark, it's always good to see Mark on a Monday. He says, with the transfer portal being used and with the national coverage it receives, his opinion, the Michigan staff does not need to plan ahead for in five years anymore. If there are holes in the team, portal plugs them. 
Yeah, well, and this is a little bit of a shift, isn't it, Mark? Because, uh, you know, Michigan had success last year. Michigan had the the best transfer in Olu, Olu with Timmy. Michigan needed a center. They went out and got him from Virginia. Olu with Timmy comes in, and he's great. Great offensive lineman, great leader, great center. Here's Michigan heading into, hopefully, the college football semifinals with uh, 55 taking the snap. I say hopefully because he's, you know, he's a little banged up, but he's supposed to be back and. uh so it worked out great. A plus, best transfer on uh, out there, stand the market. But we were complaining about it because Michigan's admissions were like um, looking at guys' transcripts and being like, "No, you know what? Here's your transcripts, and we'll let like you know three of your twenty classes come in." And guys were like, "I'm not transferring to Michigan. This is BS." And Michigan missed out on Terrence Shannon Jr., who went to Illinois basketball. That was the big one. Uh, Shannon Jr. wanted to come to Michigan, but they looked at his uh, Texas Tech transcripts, and they're like, we're not taking any of these classes. We'll take, like, you know, one or two of them. And he's like, I've taken, like, 15, 16 classes. They're like, sorry, we're Michigan. And I think there's been an adjustment that way. People were saying that they wanted an adjustment, and I think that there has been an adjustment. So, yeah, I think Michigan, uh, just what we have seen this weekend, it seems like the uh, the the transfer portal is more ac- uh, accessible uh, for the uh, Wolverine. So, you know, that's, um, I think, where you're feeling pretty good. Count 22, talking about um, uh, 23 being a wrap. Let's go. Yeah, not yet. I don't think it's a wrap quite yet, a count 22. Here's kind of a, a vague uh, uh, sub sub message where it says more is such a diva. And if we didn't know uh, what you were talking about, you'd say, well, what are you talking about, Count 22? But we do know what you're talking about. And that is kind of breaking news as well. Dante Moore out of Michigan, the five star, who Michigan wanted to come to Ann Arbor as a quarterback for this class. And he spurned the Wolverines and went to Oregon a while back. He's a duck. Uh, Dante Moore became a duck. But then last week, Dante Moore was like, I'm taking another visit. I'm going down to UCLA. Uh-oh. You know, that was <laughs> that's what I think uh, the people were saying if you were in Oregon. Other places were like, hey, if he's going to take a – a visit to UCLA. Maybe he's opening back up his recruitment. But Dante Moore today has put out, um, I saw on Twitter, I saw pictures of Dante Moore and saying that he has flipped and he is now heading to Los Angeles and he is going to play for UCLA. He's going to be a Bruin. So Dante Moore, not to Michigan, certainly not to Michigan State, not to Oregon. But to UCLA, wow, and you know, I, sometimes we, we, I say wow too much, but wow, I mean, that is kind of a, it is a wow. Now look, Dante Moore, I think from the Michigan standpoint, uh, from the Michigan side of things, I know what what Michigan thought they had to beat. So this is what they thought. I have to look it up to make sure. This is what they thought that they had to give Dante Moore to come to Michigan to be uh, competitive. Well, wow, this happened so long ago. I've got this way down here. It is Michigan. Do, do, do. Are you reporting that on Dante Moore? No. Uh, okay. So I don't have the numbers. I think it was, uh, it was either 1.5 or 2.5 million along with a half dozen jobs for his family, which I don't know, are those $50,000, $100,000 jobs? Were they good for as long as he was playing in Eugene, which, I don't know, four years, six jobs at $100,000? Is that another couple, uh, you know, the couple, another million, you know, putting $3.5, $5 million, you know, kind of total package there, $5 million, it's big money. Like you can make a case it was, uh, you know, something like that. And I know it's a good news because I'm thinking that if he's just flipping to UCLA, he's not going down there and leaving, you know, uh, you know, over $3 million on the table. Chip Davis, <laughs> Chip, uh, sorry, Chip Kelly. And, you know, you want to fill this, uh, 
You want to fill this Rose Bowl up? We got to pay. We got to pay. So who knows what Dante Moore is getting to go to UCLA? I, I would I gotta think it's gonna be like you know four or five million dollars. But that's uh, speculation on my part. The part about Moore getting the money, that's what Michigan, my source, that Michigan thought that they had to go to 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 get Dante Moore to come to Ann Arbor. So, wow. Crazy. Leo saying, didn't Quinn Ewers get a million dollars to ride the bench at OSU? He immediately transferred to Texas where he's mediocre at best. Pay to play ain't the answer. Yeah, I don't think Ewers is mediocre at best. I think he's pretty good. But, yeah, I mean, you, you pay not every five-star. It's like every it's like every first-round pick that you take as quarterbacks. You think about the, the Lamar Jackson class and the Josh Allen class, who was number one quarterback, Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield has been a bust. Josh Rosen has been a, a bust. Sam Darnold, who the Lions are going to see next week, he's been a bust. That's three of them. Josh Allen's been good, Lamar Jackson, and there's one other quarterback. Uh, in that class too, but all of them, like, I mean, you look, and that's kind of the way it is now. You you go after it in first round quarterbacks, and it used to be like 50 50. I think it's less than that now when you're taking, um, you know, a guy number one. And it's a kind of, it's it's less than that even in, in um, when it comes to five star quarterbacks. They're five years younger than these guys that you already have that much more read on going into the pros. And yet, a quarterback is going to make all of the difference if you hit on one. So it doesn't matter. Like in the NFL, it doesn't matter how much, re, how many resources you give, how many draft picks that you give up. If you get it right when it comes to the quarterback position and the same thing can be said in college, it doesn't matter how many millions you're spending. If you're able to land a, a great college quarterback. So, yeah, I mean, um, uh, we're going to get to the portal coming up here in a moment. Well, let's see. Uh, Venice talking about it being wild out and crazy investment strategy. Well, college football fans are, are crazy. <laughs> and some of them got a lot of money. And, you know, they like to be involved. And, you know, it is pretty wild just over the last uh, a couple years just how this has played out it is uh it is pretty wild i think uh what account saying that 24 will be a top five class i think that's the hope that michigan is going to get involved they're going to figure it out and you know they're going to come away and being like uh you know in this and and being able to recruit and get after it that way here's shane it's good to see sugar shane saying jim harbaugh sniping on the portal to make up for the 23 class, which can be considered, which can be considered top 10. Now, if you factor in the portals due to name, image, and likeness, that hoping will have a plan in place soon, 24 and 25 classes should be top five. Shane, not even going to, you know, he wants to go past 24 and 25 and talk about top five classes. I, I like the optimism, Shane, uh, I, I've heard many people talk about uh, a combined name, image, and like, I'm, I'm sorry, combined portal in a recruiting class, you know, and bake that in. Yeah. I like, uh, I think you want to do that now because you're a Michigan fan. <laughs> like last year, uh, and, and this is no offense to you, Shane or anybody else last year when, when Michigan state, or maybe it was the year before when, when, uh, when Mel Tucker went into the portal and he was grabbing guys left and right, Michigan fans were criticizing him. Like, you just can't bring in a bunch of portal guys. And, but I get it. You know, who cares about Michigan State? But it, it, it's true, actually, that uh, it's a combination of things. Recruiting is the most important. But portal is very important on being able to shape and round your team out, especially if you miss in recruiting. There's no doubt about that. It is a, it's a huge factor. Name, image, and likeness is a huge factor when it comes to being able to uh, attract players. And the transfer portal and admissions, and just look at what Michigan did last year. Would they be undefeated without Yabi Oki and and um, and Olo Timmy? You know? Who else did they get? Cam Good? Defensive tackle? Two out of the three? I mean, they got a couple transfers in. 
And Alan Bowman was a, a, a transfer as well. Some depth. You never have the, too much of that at quarterback. But, you know, two of those guys, maybe not. So Portal's big. And it's big on all fronts. And you, you can't uh, disregard any of it. The punter is saying Michigan recruiting Ohio is a big deal. Michigan has traditionally had competitive teams when they've recruited that state. Nobody's going to argue with you punters on that. Ohio's got great talent, and let's go. I think uh, I'm with you on that. Leo, in the long run, the portal will hurt high school recruiting. Why waste time developing a guy who may jump into the portal when you can get proven talent from the portal? Yeah, that's right. I, I think uh, I think it was uh, Antoine earlier who mentioned culture. Team building, and this is a, a fluid situation. You know, your head coach is a CEO bringing in the right fits. Like, what if you, let's just say you didn't have anybody, you know, basically it's a recruiting class and you just went for the portal for, for everyone. Like kind of like Dion's going to do like Dion's out there. Like, you know, he wants to assemble his whole team. He's, you know, out there in Colorado, maybe he's got some name image and likeness money, but you know, he can turn that team around and everything else. When you have classes come together, come in uh, together and then, you know, they, they move along to the three, four and, and even five years and then fit into the team's concept. And then you, you're, you know, you're adding uh, money now in the middle of this, where some of the players weren't able to even weren't able to get money up coming out of high school. And now players can, and now you're bringing in players with the portal. It's, um, it's a real, it's a, it's a heck of a situation for a coach who's t- thinking about and, and preaching, Hey, you know, team and, uh, you know, we're, we're all looking out for one another, but then at the end of the year, you know, whatever percentage of the team is hitting the portal and then you're hitting the portal and then you're, you know, uh, we're going to pay quarterbacks, but we're not going to pay you know, a lot of different things now. So, uh, you know, how the coach is able to keep it all together and have everybody, even if, you know, some are getting paid and some are not, and some are, you know, coming in as transfers and, uh, you know, how many you can bring in and still be able to gel, coalesce as a team. Pretty, uh, pretty interesting. And we're just in the beginning of all of this. So they're going to be teams that are like, yeah, like you know, a lot of uh, fractures and, you know, different components over here to the team, teams that are bad. You know, you see this. Look, Michigan had a successful year this year. They had, you know, two of their captains left, you know, sniping and, and bitter and crying. Just imagine, you know, if you're a team like Michigan State, what guys are going to be saying about what's going on and everything else. And then it's um, it's pretty wild uh, when it's that. But uh, it's college football now. Uh, David talking about uh, the transfer portal. All right, well, let's get to the transfer portal. David? Get high quality individuals, just like uh, Brad Holmes' approach with the Lions. Yeah, high quality individuals that are great players. Let's put that part in there. I mean, that's the thing. You know, you, we could go out and get a bunch of choir boys, but you're not going to win football games. You want that combination of uh, guys that are great teammates and are great players. That's the tough part. Okay, so the the transfer portal. Michigan has dove in here, and they're doing a hell of a job. Remember last week. Late last week, they got Ernest Hausman, a transfer from Nebraska. He's a three-star linebacker, but he is uh, a great get for the Wolverines at linebacker. Um, It wasn't rivals. It was somebody else out there, and maybe there's more than one entity that that ranks transfers, but I kept seeing it on Twitter that uh, Hausman, not only is he considered one of the best in the transfer portal, he was considered number one in the transfer portal. So, you know, hey, hopefully they know what they're talking about when it comes down to that. But obviously Michigan liked him, and they were able to get him. He had double-digit tackles against the Wolverines. And that just started a run with the transfer portal. It broke the seal on the portal because then this guy, Josiah Stewart, was visiting Michigan over the weekend. He was uh, 
played his college ball. He was a three-star kid out of Massachusetts that went to Coastal Carolina. Coastal Carolina had some success the last few years. And Stewart had 12 and a half sacks in 21. He had double-digit TFLs this year, three and a half more sacks this year. But here's what I find the interesting part. Josiah Stewart was down to Michigan, LSU, and USC on where he was going to transfer to. And somebody else mentioned, like, how is Michigan able to get these guys uh, in, you know, are they paying them money? And, you know, they're not paying the recruits because this was going to be an interesting test case. Michigan wanted, I'm sure they wanted Stewart. I didn't feel like it was going to be much of a chance once I saw who they were in the running for. I take the both the S in LSU and the S in USC, and I might as well put dollar signs there. USC is definitely paying up front, up front money to players. LSU is definitely playing, uh, paying signing bonuses. So Stewart is shooed the signing bonuses for LSU and the overtures from USC to come to Michigan. I find this to be a big deal. They were able to bring in a player who turned down a signing bonus to come to Ann Arbor. And this kid a thumbs up. I, I, I think that's a, a good sign. It is a good sign. I don't think that is a good sign for Michigan. I like that part. Michigan wasn't done in the transfer portal. You remember Chris Hinton, defensive tackle, was on the team last year. His brother, a five-star, former five-star offensive lineman out of the Peach State, Norcross, Georgia. That's where Jeff Backus is from, the former Wolverine offensive lineman. Well, Miles Hinton, the little brother of Chris, he transfers in. 6'6", 3'10". He's got two years left. He'll be able to come in somewhere along that Michigan offensive line. That seems like a pretty good get for the Wolverines. So does this guy, Drake Nugent. He transferred in from Stanford as well. Good school, Stanford, academically. Maybe those transfer credits were able to um, come in a little bit easier when you're talking about Stanford. I'm not sure about that, how that works. But uh, I did see that Pro Football Focus graded Nugent as the sixth best center. And so I, I know that Ola with Timmy is leaving. I would have to look at the other the other four that were rated in front of Nugent. My guess is that a couple of those guys, they'll be going pro. Michigan may have, I'll just say, they're getting one of the best centers rated by a pro football focus. And he was a uh, on the list of the Remington that Oliva Timmy won. I don't know how far he ended up making that, but Nugent, uh, he's a good one. And Michigan is able to get him. So, you know, the transfer portal now, when you just take a uh, look at it, you remember, uh, it seems like a long time ago now, but Ladarius Henderson, he was um, a grad transfer from Arizona State. Then you got Houseman. And then this weekend, I think it felt like this, Drake Nugent, Miles Hinton, and then Josiah Stewart. Five guys all in the transfer portal. Three offensive linemen, a rush edge in Stewart, and a linebacker in Houseman. Impressive for the Wolverines and what they're able to do in the transfer portal. How about that? I mean, that's a, that's a pretty big deal. That's what David was talking about. He was calling him the number two edge rusher out of the portal. Again, these guys are ranked, so, um, uh, you know, it could be that. There you go. What it's coming down to, right? That's how it's, uh, that's what's happening. Let's take some more of the feedback here before we get to the awards. And they were coming in left and right for Michigan. Steven is, uh, giving it, uh, a gold blue. Might be talking about a little Dante Moore with Dante going, uh, down the coast from, um, Oregon down to UCLA. AJ saying he was looking for that big bag. Yeah, a, a huge bag. I don't know how much Michigan would have had. I you no, know, Michigan wasn't getting involved in, in, in six million. I don't know. You know, the numbers, it sounds, you know, and it might be true. Like I said, it was multi-millions 
of dollars that Michigan thought that they had to beat to get Dante away from Oregon. I know that. So what UCLA had to come over the top when they were figuring in the jobs, who knows? UCLA also has that weather. You know, Dante may have went up to Oregon. It may have rained for like two weeks straight and said, the hell with this. Then went down and Chip Kelly's calling him. And he's like, Dante, look at this. And looking out there and Dante's looking at, you know, it's 75 and sunny. It's always sunny in LA. Let's go. May have been able to put that. You know, that's a, that's a pretty easy recruiting pitch when it comes down to Southern California. It's the first thing they lead with. Hey, do you like the palm trees? Did you did you enjoy the uh, the convertible we brought you in from the uh, airport, LAX, Cali? Great place to visit. Jeremy says no, it's a pipe dream. And following uh, Dion and Travis Hunter, just followed him. Jim Clink, Will Keon Sab, we can dream. <laughs> Uh, it's a pipe dream and following Dion. Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I didn't see the, the context of that feedback completely, uh, Jeremy. So I'm not 100% sure where that was all coming from. Ray says um, it will likely become a minor league for the FBS. I don't know who that means. Venice would rather do his shopping in the portal than high school simply because he can see what the guys did in college. Yeah, I get that part. He is saying portals evaluations are easier. Yeah, I mean, evaluations are always changing. Like, whatever, if we all went out 50 of us and we all put our evaluations in on players, you know, and then in, in six months, those evaluations are not going to be the same. The board is going to move around. It constantly is in flux. And so then if you get a chance to see the guys, wherever you had their, your grade on them, however, number system, whatever you use. And then you had a chance uh, to watch tape on them once they get into college. Well, then you're going to adjust your grade on that. And that's why, you know, Michigan, you got to keep a tab. You know, they've got all these analysts. They got a lot of guys sitting around watching a lot of football and got, they got grades on everyone. And then try and decide, like, uh, who's hit the portal and uh, what your needs are. And can you bring them in? Man, it is. Uh, you could say it's fun. It's fun right now for Michigan. Let's see. Dave asking if someone changes jobs for more money, are they disloyal or just an American? You know, it's a good point. When college football coaches do it, it's like, hey, you know, it's it's business. They're going to take more money, take a more lucrative deal. What do you mean? You know, they'll leave their kids high and dry. Now when the kids are doing it, people are like, wait a second, what about the loyalty? I mean, what do you go to college for in the beginning? I mean, all of those things uh, factor in. I get it. If I was a five-star, it's hard for us to, and, and I know people that, like, worked their whole life academically and were able to get into Michigan. And then they went there and appreciated the whole uh, process and, and what it meant to get the education. And then, you know, wherever they went to, uh, wherever they got their job and the pipeline and their Michigan education. And they're like, you know, this is the way to do it, you know, go to Michigan. And uh, I, I get that. But what if you were a five-star in every place in the country? You could go anywhere and yeah, you, you factor in the education, but if you're a five-star, you're thinking I'm going to be gone in three years. I'm going to the NFL. Should I grab some money before those that's, I, I, that's factoring in. There's a lot of things that factor in usually playing time, getting to the NFL, playing for a winner, playing with, uh, for championships, development, money, weather, you know, a lot of factors that go in there. Woo. Hey, yo, I I like what he's saying here, that some of the transfer portals have a few years of eligibility left. That's right. Account 22 is looking for another transfer in Fentrell, Cyprus. 
I don't know what the is this the emoji that he's using? I can't tell. Mark asking me how I see Olu stacking up. Stacking up in the uh stacking up in the championship game? Or check stacking up next game. I'm not a hundred percent where you're going with that. Oh, okay. Now I now I see it. Good job, Mark. Came back and you looked at your original question. You're like, let me, uh, how do I see him stacking up with Carter? Is Carter the one that wears 88 for the dogs? Who looks like he's going to be a top five pick? Who was their best defensive player last year? Yeah, that guy's great. You know, I can tell you, Olu's going to have a chance to make a lot of money. If Olu can do anything with 88 and handle him, Carter for the dogs. That's one of the keys of the game right there, Mark, that you've hit on. We're looking past TCU and and the jump balls and, and Max Duggan and how to slow him down going to Georgia. That's the number one matchup right there. What's Michigan do with Carter? And Olo's going to have to, can uh, you know, give him some help? Can he handle him by himself? Can he win half of the uh, the reps against him? It's a great question. How do I see it? I think Olu can. I think, you know, what do you do against a great player? You, you try to, you, you know, you hold your own and, and you hope that, um, you know, you can win enough. That you can win enough. It's just like Georgia. I don't think Michigan's going to blow out Georgia, but do I think Michigan, can, the, uh, the combination of their running and passing game and their defense and the special teams, I mean, I think, uh, if Michigan plays their best game, coaches their best game, I think they can beat Georgia, but that's not going to be an easy uh, task when when you you know look at the dogs and what's going on. But that's one of the key matchups right there. I think another one is you know how how you handle their tight end. Michigan's uh, you know they're going to be the safeties coming up. I just um, are going to be Rod Moore. Is that going to be Mike Sainra still? Brock Bowers, I mean, who's dealing with him on Michigan? It was Dax last year. Is that where Will Johnson comes into play? I think it's Sainer still. I think that's going to be the uh... – oh, we got some rumors. Jason's putting out a rumor here. Let's see what he's talking about. Rumor. Hudson Card committed to them. Shaking my head. Good luck to the kid. Yeah. Oh, I, I can't – I haven't – I don't know much what's going on on the uh, on the Illinois boards. If you want loyalty, buy a dog. All the others are going to follow money. Look at that. There you go. Do you want a dog? All right. We got more. We got some awards to hand out. We'll read more feedback. You probably saw this, but it doesn't hurt to see it again. Michigan, over the weekend, won the Joe Moore Award for the best offensive line in the country two years in a row. First time a school has won the award in back-to-back seasons. Congratulations to Michigan. And that is uh, it's a great recruiting tool. It's There's nothing bad. Everything's great about this. The trophy is great. It looks like a gigantic piano with uh, it's as big as a piano. And then the you, know, you get the five statues there. And, and Michigan has it lined up just like. Here's a little mean mugging uh, Olo in the front. But the... Uh, Offensive line is mimicking the uh, the bronze statues on top of the Joe Moore Award. I like that. I like this, too. Do you remember John Madden, the great coach and broadcaster who they named the video game after? Do you recall that last season, before he died, he watched Michigan-Ohio State? And in my mind, I think that was the last football game that John Madden ever watched. His grandson plays for the Wolverines. And do you remember that he sent a text to Jim Harbaugh? And the text, Madden told Harbaugh, U of M had as good as an offensive line performance as he's seen in a football game. And so Michigan right now, there's a lot of things to like. But dubbing them offensive line you, that's nice. That's a nice thing to have. This was something that was great for U of M to hear uh, and that Harbaugh shared with Sharon Moore and that taxed as good 
as an offensive line performance as he's seen in a football game. That's one you save. You get something like that from John Madden. And that leads me into the awards that Michigan was able to receive over the weekend. They had their banquet and they were giving out awards and they put it all on social media. The scout team player of the year, hard work doesn't go unnoticed. And these three have been a huge, have been huge to the success of our team this season. Zach Peterson on offense, defense, Jesse Madden, special teams, Joel Metziger. Jesse Madden, is the grandson of John Madden. So John would be proud of his grandson who is recognized at the banquet on the Michigan scout team on a championship team, two-time championship team. Let's get to some of those other awards. This one goes to rookie of the year. This group stepped in and made an immediate impact on the field. Colston Loveland on offense. Got the first uh, touchdown, the Big Ten title game. Caught the first touchdown in the second half, 45-yarder at Ohio State. Hard to argue with that. Defense, Will Johnson. Defense, Mason Graham. So two get honored as rookies of the year. You know, if I was uh, with Michigan, I'd say, hey, you should only give one. But no ties, but, you know, they both were great. And I understand why they want to give them both, uh, you know, you want to give everybody an award, I guess. Uh, Jimmy Rolder, special teams. Colston Loveland also getting mentioned on special teams. All right. Offense, Colston Loveland. Defense, it says Jess Mason Graham here. Jimmy Rolder, Colston Loveland. So, I don't know, maybe they did. Maybe they took a vote and it was just basic Graham. Most improved player. Proud of the continued growth and development of this group. Most improved player, Carson Barnhart. Where would they have been without Carson Barnhart? Number 52. He had to come in. Did he come in early? Uh, You know, you had Ryan Hayes getting hurt. And you had Trent Day Jones hurting his ankle. And yeah, swing tackle, Carson Barnhart. I'm with you on that. Mike Barrett, most improved. You know, Barrett, uh, I think people were complaining about Barrett last year. He came in. The Kai Hill Green, not available. Had those hamstring issues, bothered him all year long. I mean, this is uh, these are good. This is a nice award here. And on special team, Matt Hibner, able to land and get the most improved player on special teams. Iman Dennis, also getting mentioned. So you get two players there on special teams. I don't... Offense, Barnhart, defense, Barrett, special teams, Hibner, Dennis. Nice name, Iman. Scholastic Awards. Seniors have a true love for Michigan and have demonstrated success in the classroom. All right, who are the smart guys on this team? Super smart. The Eufer Bequest. Brad Robbins. Not only can, you know, kick the heck out of a football, pretty smart guy. Also, Arthur D. Robinson, Caden Colazar, special teams ace. Sucked when he got hurt. That smart guy. Good. Smart guy, special teams ace. I predict um, good things for Colazar. All right. Special teams. Special on special teams. Who do we got here? A.J. Henning. I'll buy that. Punt returner extraordinaire. And Jake Moody, the the greatest kicker in Michigan football history. And that takes uh, a lot to do because Michigan has had some great ones. But there you go, Jake Moody. Congratulations. We got some more awards to give out. I think that these would have been unanimous by anybody, Henning and Moody. Offense, getting it done on offense. Offensive player of the year, J.J. McCarthy. I agree. Offensive skill player of the year. I think this one's pretty obvious. I think it's going to go to the running back. Let's see. No, Ronnie Bell. Is Ronnie Bell is a skill player, not a running back? Hugh H. Raider Award. Oluwatimi. Not going to argue with that. Skill player, Ronnie Bell. Defense, 
top defensive players, Mozzie Smith, defensive skill player, Mike Sainra still, Roger Zatkoff, Zatkoff who died this year, the great linebacker from Michigan and who also played for the Lions, Junior Colson gets the Zatkoff Award. Richard Catcher, look up this guy. You know, this guy was a chairman, a tax guru. I, I don't know if there was anybody smarter than uh, Dick Catcher. And again, the award named after him. Mike Morris. Well deserved. Smith, St. Rostell, Colson, Morris. On a Michigan defensive team that was better than last year's, nobody would have predicted that. All right, we got some team awards. An amazing year, deserving of these three awards. MVP. There's a little spoiler for you. Blake Corum. Toughest player, Blake Corum. Blue Collar Award, Blake Corum. Bo Schembechler, MVP, Blake Corum. All right, so that's why they gave Ronnie Bell the skill player, because Corum swept the uh, awards down here. Blake Corum, MVP. I think that might be it. MVP, MVP, yeah, that's it. So those guys uh, coming away with the hardware. At the banquet. All right. That's it. We'll we'll take some feedback in the remaining uh, minutes here. Uh, mm, mm, let's see what Ray has to say. The FCS Division 1, 2, 3 will likely become farm teams for the teams in the Big Ten and SEC. Just recruit players out of the portal. AJ saying the world can't function with everyone being a free agent. You need some stability. Andre says uh, he loves his boss, but somebody else approaches him with more substantially or substantial, substantially more profit, profitable opportunity. But for some reason, I can't read today. Let me try it again. I love my boss, but someone else has approached me with substantially more profitable opportunity i'll take that nil deal emoji emoji mark talking about zinter will be the key on the double team then scrape uh, zinter and keegan he mentions there at guard uh, of dealing with carter yeah the, the whole interior offensive line there mark nice job one thing about Zinter and Keegan and although with Timmy, I mean, these guys, he, uh, Carter's going to have to deal with the Joe Moore award winners. So we'll see. Maybe they can. Carter was awesome last year against Michigan. So, you know, maybe they'll be able to turn the tables on him. That's what Mark's saying. Last year's the inside line play determined the game. We'll need to show why Michigan won the Joe Moore award. Account 22 wants to change the name of the Joe Moore Award to the Sharon Moore Award. That's Account 22 from here on out. I will refer to it as the, how about the Joe Sharon Moore Award? Or is it the Sharon Joe Moore Award? I like the Joe Sharon Moore Award. There's people uh, giving it up to some of the guys who got some of that mention loves the unsung heroes. Mark wants to know what the word is on Mullings at power back. The word is that he's, uh, he's good and he's going to stay at, uh, he's going to stay at running back for uh, the bowl season. I don't know if he's practicing at both, but I uh, I know that he's going to be at running back. Look, Michigan lost Blake Corum. They needed to fill for the, the semifinal and likely the championship game. I say likely because it's likely Michigan is going to uh, win against TCU and play in the championship game, and it is likely that Blake Corum is not going to, so they need somebody else there, and Mullings has been good. <laughs> to say the least, he, he he threw the he threw the ball on the drive of the year against Ohio State, which uh, will live 
forever in Michigan lore. And then he scored two touchdowns in the championship game. So I think he's staying put. Let's continue on here. We'll take some of the feedback again right up to the top of the hour. Um, let's see what David has to say. It starts up front. Got to have those road graders. Not much better than a guard pulling and flattening a backer. I agree with you on that. I agree with you. Venice is talking about the uh, a Travis Hunter buzz picking up. Picking up for who, Venice? Who's it picking up? I want to know when when you say the buzz. I mean, like, who's who's the buzz? Who's starting some buzz on Travis Hunter? One of my competitors? I mean, is there really – how could – how could or why would Hunter, who went with Dion to Jackson State, why wouldn't Hunter follow Dion to Colorado? Hmm. All right. Did I miss an award for Donovan Edwards? You know, you, you can't you can't give an award to everyone. You know, that's the thing. Can I say uh unsung hero? MVP of the you know, you didn't you, there's the award. Donovan Edwards was the MVP of the the Big Ten title game. And Donovan Edwards, the one-armed bandit. I don't give co-MVPs. Would I give, but it would be between J.J. McCarthy and Donovan Edwards for the, the MVP for Michigan in the Ohio State game. I'll give it to McCarthy, but... Man, Donovan Edwards' award next year is going to be that statue that I'm putting up on tape right now for those of you who can see it. It is the Heisman Trophy. That is going to be Donovan Edwards' awards. Award. Doak Walker, all of it. And then he will also be rewarded with being a high pick in the NFL draft. Richard just getting here. Somebody saying, why no five stars? Yeah, we've been over that. Those cost money, and you got to give upfront money to five stars. That's why Michigan's not getting any. Richard, uh, he's playing my game. Looks like Michigan is doing well in the portal. Yes. Yes, they are doing well. Richard, you want to see it all there? And let's just put it up there for you so you can say it again. That's not what you wanted to see. It was this. Uh, where is it? Oh, there it is. Let's have a look one more time. Michigan in the transfer portal. Three offensive linemen. Henderson, who can play guard or tackle. Hit in the tackle. Drake, a center. Versatility. This uh, Miles Hinton was a former five star. He was a five star coming out of high school. Nugent, Pro Football Focus, had one had as their sixth best center this year. And Houseman and Stewart are regarded as two of the best on the uh, uh, portal market that any team could have gotten. The top in terms of Houseman and Stewart. Any team would have wanted these two. So Michigan gets an A plus in the portal. Give them an A plus in the portal. And considering they can't give any signing bonuses in recruiting to be top 20, you know, what do you give them? Because they can't give any signing bonuses out, you probably have to give them an A there. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't usually just hand A's out. I'm a tough grader. But let's recap this season. A. Ohio State game. A plus. Big Ted title. A plus. Season as a whole. A plus. J.J. McCarthy against Ohio State. A plus. Transfer portal. A plus. 
Recruiting without the benefit of signing bonus. B. Yeah. You know, you can't get all. I know it's Michigan. You know, Michigan, the you guys all want A's across the board. You know, 4.0. Okay. Let's see. Richard uh, mentioning that Ohio is fretting about losing Rayola. Oh, I forgot to mention that. Ohio State is crumbling and they're in tatters. Yeah, Ohio State's not used to a lot of things. You know, they they weren't used to losing to Michigan. And now they've lost two in a row and they just are inconsolable. It's just it's they're just down as bad as you could possibly be when you lose two in a row. And look, here's the the, the sympathy for him. The little violin. Was it so long ago the shoe was on the other foot? But now that that shoe is going to stay on the Ohio State foot for a long time. And it's what happens. You know, you are going to lose guys. And it's going to be tough. Just think what happens when you get beat by 30 points against Georgia. It's going to happen then, Ohio State, because your season got completely destroyed by Michigan going down there and then. You get a reprieve of getting back into the college football, only to get smashed to smithereens again. Yeah, that's that's being down bad. You know, Ohio State can only offer so many. uh, I don't. Yeah, they're they're. That's just a bad loss. Yeah, recruiting's tough. Recruiting five stars is really tough. You know what I'm saying? It's really hard. Do, do, let's see what the last remaining um, people on the feedback are saying. People talking about the offensive line. Uh, uh, people agreeing with, uh, with me, like Richards. The portal can't fix all bad recruiting. Mark saying Loveland was wide open on the drop toss to Gash too. That was against Illinois. He was. There's somebody saying that Montana is bringing the vibes down. You know, what's up, pure Montana? Portal has been a lifesaver, but we need to fix the bad recruiting. Yeah. Um, I guess you missed it, Pure. You know, here, here's the problem, Pure Montana. I, I know there's a lot of people, and people can't get enough of people talking about Michigan, and you know, people like rumors, and you know, I get all of that. You know, there's other people that do this, but here's the problem with you, Bad Montana. When you listen to some of these other folks that are covering Michigan, and they start telling you that Michigan isn't doing well in recruiting, or if they're calling it bad recruiting, and they haven't looked at it from the take a step back and figure out what's going with name image and likeness and realize that Michigan is using this year as a test case. You want to call it sacrificing the year, a throwaway year. I wouldn't say it's a throwaway year. It feels like they're sacrificing, but they're getting the lay of the land. That's how they're approaching it. They're taking a look at it. Yeah. Does it look like they're dying on the hill of name image and likeness, not paying the four and five stars? Absolutely. It looks like that, but winning where they are right now and heading to the college football playoff, the power that, that Jim Harbaugh has when he's able to talk to Santa uh, a week before Christmas and, you know, get in communication with Santa about he what he wants for Christmas. And it might be in the, uh, whatever Jim Harbaugh wants. If Jim Harbaugh feels like, you know, we need to, we need to work out admissions. Maybe Santa did that. Uh, Santa didn't Santa um, indicate this week that he is naming a name, image, and likeness director? Did anybody see that besides me? Or was just was that just on the Maze and Blue review, and then that just didn't become public? I forget. Sometimes I get that crossed up. Michigan's looking pretty good, Pure Montana. Just remember that. Uh, but the the winning part, and in Harbaugh being able to say, this is what I want, uh, is going to happen. 
And if it wasn't for the 2018 class in, in Michigan and in, in Harbaugh and his staff turning, uh, taking the water and turning it into wine, of, of dividing the loaves and splitting the fish, if they weren't able to do that in the 2018 class, well, I can understand how you would be really worried and, and call it bad recruiting by some guy that you're listening to that, you know, you think you're being entertained, but he's putting bad things into your head. By Michigan being where they're at right now, it's going to be able to help um, whatever the Michigan football team needs. And if they need to come off of that hill, then they will. That's the way I'm looking at it. And do you see everybody predicting the 23 and 24 classes? Like if we were sitting here next year and Michigan was at 20 and recruiting, well, then pure Montana, you know, you and, you know, your your, your boys that you watch and listen to, you guys might have a point then. But, but you don't have any points right now. If you, well, you, you have your point, but it's just not a good one. But that's your fault for, for, and, but I don't blame you. You know, you, you watch some of these, some of these guys could have been around for a while. They got a lot of followers and you think, man, this guy really knows Michigan football. Look a little deeper, pure Montana. You're coming around a little bit. Count 22s. Saying it right. Santa. Santa is the goat. It's no longer the reindeer. It's Santa and the goats. All right. I want to thank everybody for joining us. You might be like, hey, where's Scar? He's always here on a Monday. Scar was uh, had this incredible trip of watching games over the weekend. And he went to the Lions game in New Jersey against the Jets. I have heard from him. He's going to join us tomorrow. So we'll talk uh, with Jim Scarcelli, the former Wolverine, tomorrow. Till then, thanks for watching. Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy holidays. I mean, if uh, if this past weekend if there's any indication of what Christmas is going to be like, then we're all going to have a great Christmas. So long, everyone. See you tomorrow. <laughs>